Hey folks, Mr. Armstrong. I am reading a great book to you today. It's called Wide Awake Jake, and uh, it's by Helen Young, and it was illustrated by Jenny Williams. Um, that's Jake saying, uh, hello, I'm Jake. And uh, I don't have a great cover for you, except uh, it's just a really old book, and um, it's published in 1974, uh, which is a year after I was born. Um, and it's got just a little teddy bear. Anyway, but Wide Awake Jake. Once upon a time, there was a little boy called Jake who could not sleep. I can't sleep, he told his papa. Try, said his papa. And he tried. I can't sleep, he told his big sister. Read books, she said. That's what I do. And I get sleepier and sleepier. So Jake took her big red book, her pink book, her small books, her picture books, and the book with the shiny cover. I can't sleep, said Jake. Why not, said his big sister, who was a bit cross at having no books left. Too many books on my bed, said Jake. Suck your thumb, said his little sister. That's what I do, and I get sleepier and sleepier. So Jake did. I can't sleep, said Jake. Why not, asked his little sister, who was a bit cross at being wakened up. My thumb is keeping me awake, said Jake. So he went to tell his mama. I can't sleep, said Jake. Then you must go and find the Yami of Yawn, said his mama. Who is he? asked Jake. Why, he is the sleep keeper, said his mama. You find him and tell him you can't sleep, and he will tell you what to do. But how do I find him? asked Jake. You go back upstairs, lie down in bed, and you yawn, said his mama. And after a bit, you find a way. But remember, you might meet with some dangers on the road, and I shall tell you what to do. When you meet a danger, you just yawn. Because when you yawn at somebody, they have to yawn back, and all will be well. So Jake did. He went back to bed, and he yawned and yawned, and before long, he found himself walking along a very exciting road. It had trees and bushes and lots of secret little paths, and he liked it. But soon he came to a path that had been trampled down, and he heard a roar. A very big lion rushed out of the bushes. Rawr. Grrr, said the lion. Jake was a bit nervous. Anyone would be. But he remembered what his mama had said, and he yawned at the lion. The lion roared again, but halfway through the roar turned into a yawn. <laughs> then the lion yawned again and rubbed his eyes with his paws and soon lay down and went to sleep. So Jake climbed over him and went on his way. Soon he came to some trees that had lost all their leaves. The ground all around was scorched and black. Jake listened, and he could hear some crackling as though something were burning. And suddenly there stood a dragon breathing fire. Jake was a bit nervous. Anyone would be. But he remembered what his mama had said, and he yawned at the dragon. The dragon yawned back, and when he did, all the air rushed into his mouth and put out his fire. 
a dragon without fire isn't a bit frightening. And the poor beast ran away, yelping, yip, 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 into the trees, and Jake went on his way. Soon the ground all around him began to tremble. Thump, 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 he heard, and he knew what it was. It was a giant. And then he saw him as big as a house and rather fierce. When the giant saw Jake, he began to say, Fee, fi, fo, fum, which is what giants do say. Fee, fi, fo, fum. Jake was a bit nervous. Anyone would be. But he remembered what his mama had said, and he yawned at the giant. And the giant yawned back. Once, then twice, then oh, hum. And he rubbed his eyes and fell down, crash, fast asleep. So Jake climbed over him and went on his way. In the distance, he saw a marvelous castle with a long winding mountain path up to its drawbridge. And he knew it was the home of the Yami of Yawn. Jake was very pleased. But when he got to the castle gates, there was a guard with a sword. The guard said, Halt! Who goes there? Said Jake. Have you an appointment? Asked the guard in a fussy way. You can't get in without an appointment. Jake remembered what his mama had said, and he yawned. And the guard yawned back. Ooh. Once, then twice, then he rubbed his eyes and slid all the way down his sentry box, fast asleep. And Jake walked past him into the castle. It was a lovely castle. And at the end of a very long, long room on the high throne, he saw a very old, old man. And he knew it was the Yami of Yawn. Good evening, said Jake, who had nice manners. And how do you do? Good evening, Jake, said the Yami of Yawn, who knew it was Jake. And why have you come to see me? I can't sleep, said Jake. Can you tell me what to do about it, please? And the Yami of Yawn began to laugh. He laughed and he laughed. And laughs are like yawns. When someone laughs, it makes other people laugh. And so Jake did, although he wasn't quite sure why. <laughs> the Yami laughed so much, he had to hold on to his throne. And Jake laughed so much, he had to hold his tummy and roll on the floor. Finally, the Yami of Yawn stopped laughing and just chuckled a bit. <laughs> and he said, but you are asleep. And Jake stopped laughing too. Am I? He asked in surprise. You must be, said the Yami of Yawn, for no one comes to see me unless they are asleep. I am a dream, you see, one of the nicest dreams, of course. And the most exciting, said Jake, remembering the lion and the dragon and the giant and the guard. But how do I find my way back, he asked. Why, you just wake up, said the Yami. But first, We'll have a feast. When Jake woke up, he was in his bed, and it was morning. I met the Yami of Yawn, he told his mama. And now that you know the way, she said, you can go as often as you like. And Jake did. 